So into our project, we're gonna take a look in our app here and we're gonna click on, click on app.module.ts. Right here, this is just a TypeScript module. If you followed along with us in getting started with TypeScript, you'll see a lot of this stuff looks fairly familiar. This part doesn't necessarily, but that's a decorator. If you've worked with Python before, you've, you're kind of familiar with decorators. So basically what it's doing is it's just wrapping this class in this decorator and kind of saying like, hey, you know, make this thing happen. So this is actually building our Angular app. This module here, so app.module is actually doing that. And we see something in here called app.component. So the app component class is right in here. So app.component.ts. This is where we actually are setting uh, a lot of information about our app. So notice this title saying app works. I'm going to go ahead and run my um, server again. And that's ng serve. And of course, that's a local development server. It's not a live server. So that is, if you tried to access this on a live server, you wouldn't see it. But anyways, we see app works, right? Notice that my server is running. So if I go back and change this to hello serve up and hit save, and that's command S to be quick or control S depending on what system you're on. And then notice that it already changed. I didn't actually even have to refresh. I did refresh, but I didn't have to. So let's go ahead and change it again. And I'll just say, hello, serve up to save it quickly, jump in over to Chrome. And we notice that it actually does automatically change. This is a huge and, and powerful thing because it's not necessarily caching things. Um, when we do some changes, it, it will cache things in certain si situations. But right now, when, when I'm working in my development, um, it allows me to make changes on the fly and I can see those changes actually happen. Okay, so I see that, yeah, I've got this title class here, but how is that actually working, right? So this is actually going through our template. So if you're familiar with Django or Python, what we do in it is um, some view and it passes in a request and then often we will return render and then some request and some template and some context, right? So that these two things are roughly doing the same thing where the template is right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this, but I can also declare just template and using ticks. So these are not quotes, but they're ticks. Notice the direction of them versus the quote. Um, so using ticks, you can actually override this template using curly brackets. I can say title is cool. And then I can, I'm gonna go ahead and comment out the template URL save that remember that you have a comment there if you don't have that comment there eh, you get an error right so that's where that that typescript uh, package is really useful in sublime text i go back into my chrome and i see hello serve up is cool so this is this is what's nice about this component decorator is i can change the template url i can also change the template and the context that's going inside the template is coming from the variables you declare here. So if I say description equals to a new app and I say, this is cool. And then I put, let's put in some actual tags here. So I'll put that into a paragraph and I'll actually put the description into a paragraph and I'll put the title into an H1 tag. And I'll just say, title, we save that, and I jump back into Chrome, check it out. So if I said description two inside of these curly brackets and refreshed, I don't have anything, right? It just says is cool. Um, so that's how templates and these components work on a very basic level inside of app.component.ts. Now, if I comment out this template and go back into the template URL, um, I can actually take a look at app.component.html. Here is an actual template, right? So just like what we did here, I can copy this and bring it in here and there we go. So we actually have that template running. And if I refresh or don't even need to refresh on my server, I see that this is going through just fine. Now, if I made a mistake um, and I save it and I go back, I get something like this. This is how cool Angular command line or Angular CLI is, it, it will show you this stuff. It says it's failed to compile. Now there's probably something behind this 
Angular CLI that's doing this actually, but Angular CLI has that nice and packaged for us. And it shows us right where the error is and kind of what it expected, right? So line seven, it's saying line seven, and then then basically column or space three. So if we look in here, it's, it's expecting a comma. So if I put a comma in front of that, it works again, which is kind of cool. So that's another thing. Obviously the comma should be over here because of just making it look nicer and following along with, you know, kind of best practices. That's where it's going to be. All right. So there's one other aspect of the component that I want to talk about, and that is the selector. So the selector is basically a div selector or, or an HTML tag. So what we see here is I've got H1 here, right? H1, P, and then P. So app root works very similar. I'm going to call it serve up root because my app is called serve up. So I save that. I go back in here. I just get loading, right? So it's just showing me loading. That's because we have an error. So it doesn't show me exactly what the error is. So what I have to do is go to command option J, which opens up the JavaScript console, which another way to do that is view developer JavaScript console. Um, and there are JavaScript consoles on other browsers, but of course I'm using Chrome. So keep that in mind. So if I scroll up, I see that it says the selector serve up root did not match any elements. So what happens is when you create a boot, uh, a angular app bootstrapped, it automatically has some pre built things as we've already seen. One of those automatic things is, is creating an index file. This index file is actually what's being served with the ng serve, right? So that command ng serve is building off of this index file with some other things, but that's where it's going. So notice that I have this tag here of app root. And if you remember back, I'll keep that open. If you remember back, I have, I had app root here, but now I have serve up root. So real quickly, I can just change it to serve up root. There we go. We refresh in here. Everything's working again and it's all good. Now this is generally for the entire app. This is for the entire serve up app. Now what we need to start thinking about is how do we create our own sub apps of this to control different aspects of our application. You, you might think of this as, um, well, they are called components. They're not called apps, they're called components. So different components of our general app, how do we actually create those? And what are those things going to do for us? That's something we still need to cover. So if you have any questions on what we did so far with these components, please let us know. And also understand that by default, this is the app component that is run with Angular. That's what it's going off of. We will play around with that in the future, but I just wanted to let you know that that's the main thing and that's where it's coming from. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.